What are the best tips and things to know about cruising? And I'm not talking from some person that just took their first trip, but from someone that spent literally months at sea across cruise lines, cruise ships, and destinations. That's what I've done. And I decided to put together what I think are some of the smartest tips and the most interesting things to know so that you're ready for your next cruise. On a cruise, there's more of a schedule than other vacations. There's a time to arrive at the port, a time for dinner, and a time to debark and more. One good tip is stop trying to be early or even on time unless you are heading back to the ship in a port. People love to be the first on or off the ship. The result is that that line right at the start is long. Sure, sometimes you have a reason to try to get out before everyone else, but if your schedule allows, just let a little time pass and you'll find that the wait is significantly shorter. So if you don't mind spending more, then by all means, just wait until you get on the ship to buy things like the drink and the internet packages. For everyone else, there's almost always a discount if you book these things early. Carnival, as just one example, they offer a drink package for $5 per day less if booked online ahead of time. That saves you more than 40 bucks over a week when you factor in the 18% gratuity charge that's also tacked on. Book early, save money. It is that simple. The ships you sail, they range in age from being brand new to being 25 to 30 years old. And while they are updated regularly, there's still a definite difference between the older ships and the newer ships. My opinion, those new ships, they are way better. Yes, they do tend to be larger and not everyone is a fan of huge ships, but they also have all the newest activities, restaurants, and things to do. They are also much more modern in amenities and design. So all things being equal, I suggest that the newer ship is more likely to give you a better cruise. Want to know the cheapest place to drink on a cruise? It's actually in port. If you want to get a good buzz going for less money, check out the bars and the restaurants in the port area. Many of them not only have cheap drinks every day, but they offer drink specials to entice cruisers to go ahead and stop in. If you plan on drinking, get your fill in port and then walk back to the cruise ship that afternoon or evening. It's a lot cheaper to pay two or three bucks for a beer in port compared to the six or eight bucks on the ship. They should call it the law of cheap cruises. If you want to save a ton, be flexible with your dates and sail when school is in session. When school is in, families with kids, a huge demographic in cruising, they can't easily take their trips. As well, times like summer and the holidays, they're simply easier for just about anyone to sail. That means the cruise lines are looking to fill rooms and will offer up cheap fares to entice people to sail when school is in session. In fact, it's not surprising to find fares that double during holiday breaks when families can take their trips more easily. Think you have to search site after site after site to get the best cruise deal? Think again. What you'll almost always find is that cruise prices are actually the same across all websites. Now, that's not to say that prices won't change. In fact, they will. But when a price moves, you'll see it reflected just about everywhere. Just pick your favorite spot to search and stop worrying if another website might have it cheaper. What you might find, however, is that some sites, they do offer better incentives to book. For instance, Costco Travel will often give you a Costco cash card if you book with them that can be used like cash in the store. Now, when you think of a cruise, you likely think of heading to the warm Caribbean, but trips, they go everywhere in different locations can give a very different experience. Honestly, I've taken enough trips to the Caribbean that I pretty much know exactly what to expect. But taking a cruise to Alaska is like nothing else. The landscape, it is simply stunning, really like nowhere else that I've ever been. And the ports of call, they are more cities that cater to tourism compared to the towns that revolve around tourists like you see in the Caribbean and the Bahamas. If you've been to Alaska, then you know exactly what I mean. If you haven't, then I'd recommend that you start planning a trip there immediately. No, you can't bring liquor or beer on a cruise, but cruise lines, they do let you bring on some wine or champagne. Others, including big names like Carnival and Royal Caribbean, they allow you to bring on non-alcoholic drinks as well. Take advantage. 
With drink prices on the ship, every little bit helps. If you bring a bottle of wine and some sodas, you could save yourself 50 bucks or more versus buying on the ship. One thing you might not realize is that cruise lines way overpack when it comes to food. In fact, for a week-long cruise, it's not unusual for the ship to pack at least several more days worth of food up to another week's worth. The reason? You never know what might happen at sea. An issue with this ship could mean it's delayed coming back to port, or maybe the weather means that it has to spend an extra day at sea. No matter the reason, ships prepare for the possibility of delays by packing more than they need. It's also why it's no issue if you want to order that second entree in the dining room. Didn't realize that you needed a reservation or that the spot you wanted was already filled? Don't worry, you might still be able to get in. You can head down to the restaurant and see if there's any room available. Sometimes people make reservations and then they forget about them freeing up space in the specialty restaurants. Your chances are best if you go early or late at mealtime instead of during those peak hours. Now, there's no guarantee you'll get a space, but I can tell you from experience, it does happen. When it comes to the number of meals served on a cruise, the buffet is going to be at the top of the list. Let's not kid ourselves, it can be better. Still many people, they eat breakfast and lunch in the buffet and at least some occasional dinners. I'll be honest, after eating in the buffet a couple of times, I've personally had my fill for the cruise. So I think it's a good idea to go ahead and go to the other restaurants on the ship for something different. For instance, the main dining room, they serve breakfast and lunch as well, and it's included. They're also specialty restaurants. Now they may cost extra, but I'll happily pay not to eat the same stuff over and over again. More than two years since the start of COVID, Everyone knows that unfortunately it is still around. And despite testing and vaccination rules, that does include on cruise ships. The good news is that cases seem to be more mild in nature. The bad news is that every ship currently tracked by the CDC as of this video in July of 2022, is either orange or yellow indicating cases. In fact, zero are green status. You do need to be aware of it, even if most of us have gotten back to normal. My suggestion is to mask up indoors, and it's better if you drive to the port. If you fly and you end up with COVID, you won't be allowed to fly back home until after the quarantine period. If you drive, then you are allowed to get in your car and drive home. On any cruise, you'll find yourself going up and down decks constantly. If it's three decks or less, do yourself a favor and take the stairs if possible. Elevators, frankly, they're slow to arrive unless you get lucky. After all, there are thousands of people on a modern cruise ship. And since the stairs are always located right next to the elevators, simply taking a few flights up or down gets you there so much faster. I know what you might be thinking. Oh great, another app to download. But the apps for the cruise lines, they are really handy. First, they can be used without having to pay for Wi-Fi, so you don't have to worry about any extra costs. It's all free. But they also have things like ship maps, the schedule of events, and even allow you to track your spending while on board. So get it, use it, and then you can delete it after the cruise if you want. But you will be happy that you downloaded it. If you can, look for a cabin that sits on the upper decks of the ship. No, it's not because the higher decks offer better views. Instead, it has to do with getting around the ship. Cruise ships, they are usually laid out with a center promenade area that includes things like the casino, a center bar, restaurants, and shopping. On many ships, this will usually be around decks six through eight. Then there's the pool deck area that's located at the top of the ship. These two areas are where passengers spend the most time when they are outside of the cabin. So if you have a room that is between these two spots, it means you are within a few decks of either at any time. That makes it so much easier to get where you wanna go as opposed to waiting on an elevator because you were on a low deck. I've mentioned this in other videos, but cabin hallways, they can go on forever. And with no windows, it can be hard to know where you're going. In that case, look for the clues. 
On NCL, the hallway carpet has little fish on it. These fish, they swim forward on the ship. On Royal Caribbean, the door markers will have a clue with a little small arrow pointing forward or an image of the ship that faces to the front of the ship. If you are on an older vessel, then you might have a door marker that's in the shape of a wave. Here, the higher part of the wave points the way to the front of the ship. You can use this to help you get around. If you go on a cruise, then expect to see crowds. You don't really get that in the marketing from the cruise lines. The largest ships though, they can hold upwards of 6,000 passengers. Even so, if you do hunt around a little bit, you'll find places on the ship that are less crowded. I like to try to hunt these areas down in the first day or two so that I always have somewhere quieter to relax. Quiet areas, they will vary based on your specific ship, but you'll be able to find them pretty quickly if you just go for a quick walk to see where people do and don't congregate. What's that huge line that you see in the middle of the ship at the beginning and the end of the cruise? It's the line to talk to guest services. It's always a hassle to have to deal with getting things straightened out with your onboard account, but it's something that you do occasionally have to do. So here is a big time saver tip. If you do have to talk to guest services, plan your visit either later in the evening or early in the morning. At these times, the line is almost non-existent, so you can talk to a rep immediately. Guest services, they're actually open 24 hours a day during the cruise. Drink packages are hugely popular and they can save you a lot of money, but you need to know the fine print. For one, gratuity is added on to the headline costs. You also have to purchase it for each day of the cruise. But one that catches some people by surprise is that everyone in the cabin needs to buy the package if one person does. I've put a link with more about drink packages in the video description below, but you definitely need to know all the rules before you decide to shell out hundreds of dollars for the package. There is a whole list of things that you can pack for your cruise. In fact, I've put a link in the description, but a few things that you might not consider can be very handy. First, I always like to bring a plug adapter. Outlets can be limited and it turns one plug into three. Second, try some poopery. Cabins, they are small and it's nice to be able to cover up those smells when you do have to go. Third are small magnetic hooks. Cabin walls and ceilings, they are actually metal. These hooks, they give you the perfect place to hang hats or wet swimsuits and more instead of taking up space elsewhere. Balcony or not. Of course, balconies are better, but they come with an extra cost. My rule of thumb is four days. If taking a cruise for four days or fewer, you can go ahead and skip the balcony and save the money. You'll be out and about around the ship and in port that your balcony isn't likely to get that much use. Five days or more, however, then springing for the balcony is a good idea. On longer cruises, you'll have a bit more downtime, meaning that you'll have more opportunity to sit out and enjoy the beautiful view. Here you're more likely to get your money's worth. Thank you for watching, but before you go, I wanna know what is your favorite cruise tip that you've learned? I'm only one person and while I've taken plenty of trips, you likely have some great ideas to share as well. Put them in the comments below for all the other people that are watching this video. Also, be sure to check out the links in the description for more details on some of the tips that I mentioned earlier. You can also like and subscribe. And until next time, happy cruising.